Hey everybody, Spencer here, uh, back in the classroom. Uh, this is the second continuation of our series that we're doing. From the uh, last time we met, we were at the old gas station and we photographed that. So now this is going to be the developing part of it, like I mentioned in the previous video. If you get a chance to watch that, you might want to go and check that one out first. And um, so I wanted to bring some of the things and show you. It. We're going to do this step by step together. I have not developed the film. I have not seen it. So who knows? It, maybe there's nothing on it for all I know, but we'll find out together. Um, so one thing I did want to kind of go over some of this with is even though I shoot 8x10, is you can be very mobile. You can be domestic, go, go around domestically and travel and take all this stuff with you. When I went to Georgia, uh, last month to Old Car City. This is exactly what I took. I basically took um, my my motor base that we looked at before and I had this box full of stuff and that's about it. So what I'm getting at is if if you're traveling around around whatever country you're in as long as you're driving this this should be fine. So it worked well for me. I was able to develop and do everything I needed to do uh, while I was on location up in Georgia and didn't have any problems. So I just kind of want to go over why this, why, how, what I have packed, how I had it packed, and so it might help some of you guys out. So obviously the motor base, you guys have seen that before. That's the part that rotates the canister for the film. So that's pretty simple. That just plugs in and that one's done. So now in the box, this is, there's no rhyme or reason to any of this. So I'll just kind of quickly go over this. Again, we did all this in developing tools video. If you didn't see that, you might want to go check that one out. But so I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it here. Uh, the gloves, you can get these at Walmart for around $5 for 40 of them. And these are the nitrile gloves. Uh, they're not the latex. This is what was recommended for using this kind of developer. So I went ahead and bought those. They're pretty, pretty easy there. As far as Again, no particular order here. I got this thermometer that you saw before. This is, I don't know I'm going to take some flack for this, but this is a plain uh, meat digital thermometer. It has worked well for me. So, you know, if you have a darkroom thermometer, you want to get one of those, great, go for it. But this is what's worked for me. I'm not here to make you guys change the wheel of whatever it is you're doing. If it's working, great, stick with it. This is just what's worked for me. So... Um, maybe one day I'll, I'll get a darkroom thermometer. For now, that one works. I have these little plastic cups in various sizes that I use to measure water, and they are uh, labeled. And I have this toothpick. This is a very important tool. I'll show you that in a little bit. So those are pretty, pretty much all this stuff I get from B and H. Uh, they've been good to me. I can't complain. So. Uh, the stirring stick, if you need to mix chemicals, I told you, you know, I probably wouldn't buy one of those um, for what I'm doing. This, this was a waste of money, so don't get suckered into buying one of those. For stirring chemicals, this is actually what I use, is some straws. You can get a whole lot of these cheaper, plus they're disposable, so use those. I've got my little graduates. So I have a graduate for each uh, chemical I'm going to be using. So because I'm using a divided PyroCat um, HD, so I have a part A and a part B. And I have the wetting agent one and I have a fixer and I'm using TF5. So those go over there. And again, I got these at uh, all the stuff at B&H. I'll just unload some of this to make it a little easier. Okay, so here's the wetting agent from Ilford. Works fine. Um, this will probably last me till they wheel me in the nut house, but <laughs> it should last a while. Uh, here is I bought this again at B and H. Uh, this is what I mixed the TF5 in. I only mix enough fixer to I think it's like 150 milliliters. Let me check my notes here. Yeah, you might as well say it's 150 milliliters, and that's enough to work with that film canister. So I don't mix this whole bottle, or I don't mix the whole thing all in one shot. So this is where the finished working solution goes. And you can see I've got obviously some piece of tape on here. It says TF5, and then down below there's a blank piece of tape. Now this is empty. So what I did is I disposed of this, 
and I'm going to mix up a new batch. So as I work with this, it's going to get weaker and weaker with each sheet. So what I'll do is when I do one sheet, or I'm done today, I'll, we'll have two sheets because we shot two at the um, old gas station. So I'll put two lines on here. And the other thing I'll do is a tip, just in case I forget to mention this later, is I start with five minutes when this is fresh, brand new, freshly mixed. And then for the next sheet, I will extend my time by one minute. And then I'll, do, so as I keep going, I add a minute to each sheet. So that helps. I've been burned by using Old Fixer, and I kept it at the same processing time. And what happened was I lost a, a really nice photo because it wasn't fixed long enough and the fixer was weak. So from now on, this is what I've been doing. It's been working, working quite well. I only do about um, five sheets, maybe six, eh, push it to six. But basically, you know, fixer is so cheap, I just mix up a fresh batch, usually after four or five sheets. So in that way, I know it's, it's going to be okay. So anyway, so that's, that's that. Um, here's the... My fancy dancy drawing clips. Yes, you can buy these commercially, but again, when I was getting started, I'd, you know, spend all this money on the camera and film and everything to get started. So this was my solution to get started. So I took a paper clip. I don't know if you guys can see this real good, but I bent it into a, into the shower curtain rod shape. And then these are office clips. So when I clip this on the film, I just take this bottom portion of this of the paper clip and just put it through there and hang this on the shower curtain and there it is now it's hanging so I just have a few of those I'm sure you have these hanging around the house so that's probably free for you yes the other clips aren't that expensive if you want to get some of those obviously get those um, plus you can weight the film I find I don't have problems with the sheet film because it's just one sheet but if you're doing roll film like 35 millimeter or 120 then generally you want to put an extra clip or two on the bottom to keep it, keep some tension on it so it doesn't curl up on you. All right, so then I mix my part A and part B in these little, this is, I got these at Wally World, that'd be Walmart. Uh, these are nine ounce cups, clear cups. I don't know, I probably was like $2 for this whole thing. This will last me a while. So again, that can be thrown away when we're done. So when I decided to try PyroCat, um, I was recommended to use this TF5. I was told the TF4 is a super saturated solution and it can get chunks or something in it and you have to really try and you have to mix the whole thing at once to get it to, to uh, get the chunks to mix in with the solution. So with this you don't have that. So it's been working fine for me. I mean, this huge bottle, I, I've used this much at a time out of it because again, all of this when you use that um chrome drum that you guys we talked about before uses so little chemistry this will probably last me for years i would imagine and it's worked well for me i can't have any complaints and this was from a photographer's formulary in montana so again pretty pretty simple on that one and then here is here's this is brand new i haven't even um, got into it. i think i showed you guys in the other video i had the starter kit I just finished up the starter kit from Georgia, so I probably got, if I had to guess, about 20 sheets out of those little bottles. So maybe you might want to buy it that way. Uh, these are, this is solution A and solution B to 500 milliliters. So these are, th this should last me a very long time because <laughs> again, I'm only using a little bit. So um, anyway, got that from the same company. And the PyroCat's been working fine for me. I don't have any complaints. I've also used D76. A lot of my friends who also do this around the, around the United States, they also use D76 and they like it. Uh, some, the reason what prompted me to try this over the D76 is online. Some people said that the D76 allows for the silver migration and it's not as sharp. So. I don't know. Where I've seen the biggest uh, difference in the PyroCat versus the D76 is in the midtones. It's a little bit more smoother. And the other thing is this is a staining, de uh, yeah, staining developer. So that means that since I'm constantly, usually here in Florida, I have to deal with harsh highlights and shadows most of the time. It will stain the highlights more than it will the shadows. 
and it's going to help keep the detail on the negative. That's what I've been told and that's supposedly how it works. So, so far I've gotten good results with it. So yeah, I'm, I'll stick with it for a while and keep playing with it. There's some other developers down the road I'd like to try just to, just to see what kind of results I can get. But so far that's been fine. All right, this is out of service. This is basically just, I don't even want to tell you what I use this for because I know people get, would flame me for it. All right, in the true sense of being fully transparent, this used to be my washing tray. It was a turkey pan, so now I just use it for a cover. So I called up uh, the camera store, obviously, at uh, B&H, and I bought a proper tray to put the wetting agent in, and this is a regular, and it's got a nice, some of them have grooves at the bottom. I like this one because it was completely flat, and it has a little pouring spout to help me, you know, keep the mess to a minimum. And again, this was cheap. It was like, I don't know, eight bucks or something, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, and then we have the Zebra Chrome drum, so here we go. So, yeah, this is basically what we stick the film in, and what makes it light tight when I pull it out of the um, tent and then I can work with this and you know regular light and we can develop our film and it doesn't take a lot of chemistry because the chemistry just lays towards the bottom of the of the uh, tank and this is what spins on the motor base and you can get these on eBay uh, that's where I've got a bunch of them I bought like three of them once I figured this out again a gentleman by the name of Craig Sheeks he's the one that showed how to do this so i give it him credit for all for the motor base and a lot of this stuff because that's where i saw it so if you haven't checked out his channel you may want to go um, he's he does some amazing work as well so anyway so thanks craig for that one the other thing is because i'm an only child and i have no life <laughs> when i when you do one sheet of film you've got to dry this completely if i'm going to do a second sheet of film so I do that generally with paper towel. And I thought, well, paper towels are paper towels. You know, no big deal. So we've been buying the bulk thing of paper towels at our local Sam's Club. So I thought, you know, it seems like I'm constantly getting um, dust in my tank. And I was trying to figure out what in the world's going on. I try to be very careful, blow it out, all this kind of stuff. And then I found out in the world of paper towels, some are better than others. So I did some little research and this is what a lot of people have said that's more lint free. It's not lintless, but it's lint. It has less lint than other ones. This Viva, again, I got this at Walmart. So we'll try this today and see if this works. Um, it, the paper on it does look a little bit different than your normal paper towel. So we'll, we'll give it a go and see if that's any better. I did buy some PEC pads, that's P-E-C uh, pads from b &H, they are industrial lint-free pads. But I also found out they're absorbent-free. <laughs> so um, I was just basically pushing water around this when I was trying to dry this just around and it wasn't actually absorbing anything. So I couldn't get that to work. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try this uh, paper towels and see if they work any better. So, all right. Oh, one other thing before I forget is I'm gonna, the iPhone, and what I use this for is I use that massive dev chart. And what I can do is it will kind of get you in the ballpark as far as time and temperature and uh, set you up for a schedule to do your developing. I think I paid $5 for it at the App Store. Um, I'm iPhone. They, I think I imagine they have it for Android as well. But that's what keeps me, keeps me on track. So uh, in a minute, I'm going to go to the whiteboard and I'll show you how I came up with the schedule. And then I plugged one in custom so there's a way you can do that as well um, other than that I think that's about it of course the tent you guys have seen the tent I have it set up on the other side of the room so that folds up into a small small little case you guys saw me put that together in the last video so basically that's this box and some paper towels and the tent that's it and that's what I went up to Georgia with and that's what I basically processed the film with while I was up there and brought home negatives. So other than that, I think we're, uh, we're in good shape. Okay, so when I got into this PyroCAD, I kind of had to come up with, for me, again, I'm doing the hybrid method, which is gonna mean I'm gonna need the divided PyroCAD method. 
Now with any kind of developing you generally have your developer, stop bath, fix, wash, and wetting agent. That's generally kind of what you're going to be doing. So with this particular setup what I'm going to be doing is um, for the developer because we have a parts A and B I'm going to do part A so we'll just put A here in parentheses for four minutes and then I will do B for four minutes so what does that mean? So when I go to mix the PyroCat, I'm going to put part A in its own cup and then put part B in its own cup. I will run the, the part A in the, in the film for four minutes and then we will drain that out and then I'll put the part B in, run that for four minutes and drain that out. Why am I doing this? And how did I come up with these numbers? Well, Sandy King, who developed this PyroCat developer, he has a chart. I believe you could, if you do a search for pyrocathd.com or .org, it'll come up with this web page on specifically this developer. And you can learn all kinds of things. There's all kinds of documentation. But there's a chart in there that he supplied. If you're using this film at this temperature, this is the numbers you want to use. Now, they recommend sticking with 70 degrees. That's Fahrenheit, of course, um, for this particular developer. Now when I use D76, they recommended 68. And of course you could vary that up and down depending upon what you were trying to do with your with your photography and your end result. So basically with this it's going to give me a lower contrast negative and basically for scanning. Then I'll go into the computer and then I'll add my own contrast later. So again this is how I'm working right now because I don't have room for a dark, uh, dark room. So basically we have our developer now for stop bath, um, I've seen it all over the place, generally one minute. Now if you're using traditional, like the D76 or something like that, uh, you'll have to buy a regular stop bath for that. But for the PyroCat, you use water. So that's pretty simple. Uh, so we do that for one minute, and then we're going to drain that out. And then we'll fix. For I start with five minutes, like I mentioned, if the if the fixer is brand new. So then the second sheet I'll do for six minutes, the next sheet I'll do for seven minutes, and so forth until I hit about five sheets. Then I'll just dump it out and you know make make fresh batch. Now, how do I handle the washing? I have salt water at my house. I have a luxury. I'm here in the school today, so they ha they're on you know city water, city sewer, but. Uh, because I'm, again, out in the middle of nowhere in Florida, uh, we, we have a well, so therefore we have salt water. So how do I wash the film? Because there are a lot of these uh, videos you watch, they'll say, well, you'll see them put the film canister in the sink and then just run water for like 10 or 20 minutes, you know, as a slow, slow stream, and then it just kind of comes out and that washes the film. So I've had to come up with a different little way of doing it. I will wash my film for 10 minutes, so I'll just put wash 10 minutes. And then what I will do is because I don't, I'm using bottled water. In fact, I'm using distilled. So wherever I go, I, like for example, if I was going to be traveling again, I would just take and go to the local store and get some, a uh, couple gallons of cheap distilled water. Every two minutes, I drain the water and put more fresh water in. So that's how I kind of keep fresh water in the canister and then dump out the stuff that's getting tired. So that's how I wash my film. I don't know if it's right or wrong. It's what works for me on my limited um, my water supply for where I, where I am. So uh, again, it works. Obviously, if you have city water, city sewer, you're golden, you can, you can do that. And then the last thing is the wetting agent or photo flow. So we'll just put WA for wetting agent, and I do that for about 30 seconds. So that's, this is basically the schedule. Um, again, I got the numbers off that site because I am using FP4+. If you're using like Delta 100 or a different type of film, there's 
these vary a little bit and you can plug all this in that massive dev chart that's on that app and that's basically all I did so when we get that far I'll do a little screenshot I'll show you of the um, what it looks like if you haven't seen it it's really it's really quite helpful because there's these little bars at the bottom and at progression lines and it tells you when to go to the next step and how much time's left and all that kind of good stuff but anyway so this is this is my schedule when I was doing D76 uh, this would vary because then I would do like n minus one and minus two developing a lot of the time because I was trying to pull the contrast down. So there was no A or B. It was just developer for we'll say six minutes or seven minutes or whatever it was at 68 degrees. So this would be combined and then the rest of this would still would still apply. So all right. I hope this helps on kind of what we're going to do. So what we're going to do next is I'll show you how I'm going to get the film out and out of the actual film canister, the film holder, and get it into the Zebra Chrome, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are. We've got our um, thing all ready to go. Now this would be all inside the dark tent, so you have to do this, obviously. We're, we're going to be pulling the film out, so this has to be done in the dark. So I just want to make that very clear. Uh, if you do this in daylight, you're going to ruin your film, so make sure you do this in a dark place, whether it's in a bathroom, a changing bag, a tent, whatever it is you got and uh, you'll, you'll be just fine. So what I have is I just took the top off the Zebra Chrome. This was in here. I just pulled this apart. So in, the, in my dark tent, I just lay this generally closer to me, and I have this generally over here. And of course, you have your, your film holder, and then I have the almighty tool, which is a toothpick. So you'll see why I need that in a minute. So you need to, um, I'll do a thing on, a video on how to load and unload film. Uh, a little bit more in depth than what a film box looks like because that really helped me out and I had no idea what what to expect when I pulled the film out of the film box but um, anyway we'll, we'll, we'll get to that but for now we got to pull the film out of this and what I've done is I put a piece of fake film in here and then you can see how this process is and then I'll go into the dark tent and actually do it okay so again this is a 8 by 10 cassette holder if you have 4 by 5 it's the same thing Here's a little tip. I've got numbers. I've used a P-Touch is what it's called to label the, the sides. So then when I go to shoot this side, I can take a little sheet of paper and make some notes on what I did on, you know, side three or side four. So anyway, that's just a little side tip. So when I started doing this, I kind of had to come up with a way that was going to work for me all the time. So actually, I like to have the slide part of the cassette to my left. And that's what works best for me. You might like it the other way around. So basically what I'll do is I'll take and I'll move this kind of off to the side so I give myself some room to work. Now in the dark, you got these little locks. So I'm just going to unlock it or lock just the slide that we need. And then I'm going to pull this out. And here's our piece of fake film. It's called a sheet of paper. So I'm just going to pull this out a ways. And then this bottom piece flips down, and this is where now we can access the film. Sometimes I find that the film gets stuck in here, or it's just really seated well, and for whatever reason, I can't grab it. So, I mean, you're, they want you to not touch this. So, I try to get my finger under here, and sometimes it just doesn't work for me. I got what's called fat finger syndrome. So... <laughs> This is where I use the toothpick. Now, don't have a heart attack. This is not going to scratch the film. I'm not down here digging under it like this. I basically take this, and I have my finger here, and I just feel for this enough just to pull it up just a, just a little bit. So I'm done with that. And then what I'll do is I'll gently... Now, here's another tip I found out, and I've ruined... Well, I don't say ruined, but it cost me a lot of time on the computer to fix it is I pulled up like this and tried to pull out and what it did is these little rails scratched the edge of the film. So, uh -huh, you know, you learn things. So, what I did is, is I take one finger and I just kind of keep this little um, tab down and just gently pull this out like so. And again, you're supposed to handle it just by the edges, so I, I do my best. So I just pull this out like this Okay, then I can kind of push this off to the side, 
and then I would then grab this, this side here with this thumb and finger and kind of get it in this shape. Now you always got to feel to where the notch is. I put a fake notch here. This is our, your notch code that's going to be in your film. So the emulsion needs to be on the inside. So then basically what I'll do is I'll take this and I will gently get it started in this here the zebra chrome and just gently tr try it by the edges to slide it in there like so. If you're wondering if it scratched my film ever by doing that, I've not gotten any scratches from that so that's been fine. This has got a really smooth interior so I imagine that's why they thought of that ahead of time. <clears throat> so anyway, so then you want to make sure that this is seated to the bottom so that's another thing I've had to find because sometimes it'll go in you know kind of cockeyed so you just kind of gently feel the edges and once you know it's in there I take this part and gently just set it on top and I give it a good squeeze to make sure it's good and together and that's it. <clears throat> For at this point this, this I pull this out of the dark tent and I process the film. We go start putting chemistry in it. So that's what we'll do now is we'll get our chemistry all mixed up ready to go and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are. Now we're ready to actually start the developing. I took a few minutes, um, basically mixed up the, the fixer that we talked about. So that's a fresh, ready to go, uh, never been used. And I mixed up my developer. I didn't take the time to video me pouring water. Yes, my pouring water skills are epic, but I'm sure you guys got something better else to do. So all I did is I used a little graduates I put in seven milliliters of the Pyrocat Part A, and then I use 135 milliliters of water. And I've got four cups here. So I've got Part A, Part A, Part B, Part B. And since I'm doing two sheets of film, I need two sets ready to go. So I've already put the active ingredient in the Part B. That's not a problem. The Part A does have... Um, some kind of smell to it. So what I generally do is mix it, just the one, use it, and then when I get ready to do the second sheet, then I will mix this one, put the active chemical in the other part of the water, and then we'll be ready to go. So I've kind of got everything laid out. I know we're kind of in a cramped quarter here, so I'm going to try and reorient things as we work. But um, yeah, so basically I got my developer, my stop bath ready to go, which is water and the fix and then I've got my tray with the wetting agent and the water in it again that was 1200 milliliters of distilled water to six milliliters of the wetting agent so you don't need a whole lot of that. The other thing I've done this is hopefully this will come out this is my massive dev chart and I don't know if we guys can see the bottom part there so there you go so you can see it says eight minutes so that's four minutes plus four minutes, and then you got your stop bath, your fix, and then your wash, and the very end is your wetting agent. So when we hit go, this timer is going to start, and these little bars are going to start to fill up as we go through part of the process. And this has like a little school bell, or I might have it on vibrate right now because we're doing this, but uh, basically, you know, if you, again, if you kind of look closer, more at the top, you can see I've got it set up for the film and the PyroCat, and so it's all ready to go. So that makes it pretty simple. So we're all ready to go. I've already loaded the film in the canister. So basically what I'm going to do is, and again, obviously this end has the funnel, so we're going to pour in there. And as long as you don't tip it slowly, like when, I, when I'm going to pour it in the sink, and then I'm just going to go like this. And we're going to turn the motor on. Let's make sure I plugged it in. Okay, good. So that's ready to go. All right, so here we go. I've got my, the uh, app is ready to go. I've already stirred my part A, so that's ready to go. So I'm just going to take and, okay, so we're going to take this and put it in here. Again, it's not going into that canister yet because um, there's a cup inside. If you remember, there's that little cup in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on. And I'm just going to tilt this. A little bit will come out. 
And now the other thing we got, we're gonna hit the timer. So now we're starting. Um, one second here. So one thing I forgot to do that we're gonna have to do, anytime you use one of these types of canisters, is every minute they recommend you shake it to break up the flow pattern. So what I do is I use two paper towels and then I'm just, while this is running, I'm gonna pick it up, shake it and put it back. I'm not gonna tilt it over or anything like that. Um, basically that's all there is to it. There's, I wish it was more exciting, but so I'll show you when the first one comes up here. We're getting there. We like uneventful, right, when we're working. Uh, <laughs> we don't want any unexpected surprises. Hey, at least there was film in the film cassette this time. What can I tell you? All right, so we're just about there, so. Okay, so now it says one minute, I shake. And then I'll just put it back here. And now I'll wait for the next minute to come up. So that's basically, sorry, I have to get all this in here, I have to sit down. Um, so basically that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next few minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll do the part B, same way, and I'll pour this out, the A out, put the B in, then we'll do the stop bath and then the fix. And we'll wash it and hopefully we got something on the film, we'll see. Okay, so the timer just went off, so we're going to take and drain our part A. You can see it's coming out of the holes at the bottom. All right, so we got that all out of there as best as we can. I'm going to take the part B and we're going to put this in. And then what I'm going to do is turn the motor on. We're going to flip this over. I'm going to start the timer again for the second four minutes. Another tip that I do is on these cups is I need the help I can get. So I actually labeled, you know, took a marker and put part A, part B on these. And because uh, again, I just got to help keep things straight. All right, so basically I'm just going to do the old shake a shaker routine for the next four minutes. And then I'll be back with you here in a little bit to do the uh, stop bath. All right, we're just coming up to four minutes. There's the bell, so I'll just empty this out. When you do the part A, at least with my FP4+, Plus, the color comes out green. And then when you put the B in and empty it, everything started clear. The B comes out brown, which I think is that staining action. All right, so now we gotta start with our stop bath. So I'm just gonna take this. This is 150 milliliters of distilled water, nothing special here. So I'm just gonna take and pour that in and put that back on the motor. Hit start or continue. And now for a minute, it's just going to uh, stop that action. And then we'll be on to fixing. So I've got my, um, see I kind of got everything all laid out here for us. So I'm gonna do, I'll put the fixer in next. So I'll go ahead and prep that. I'll just take that off. And I have a funnel. Like I mentioned before, this one says TF5 on it. I got this again in the automotive department at Walmart. It fits these little, um, these little containers really well. So I can reuse the fix. And obviously you want to make sure that there's no gunk in here. So since I've been traveling, I might need a little, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. So I can reuse the fix a few times. So that's kind of nice. All right, so we're just about done with our stop bath here. So once you can see the system is really quite really quite nice and easy and portable and again when I was thinking about getting into film after doing digital for so long I shot film back in the 80s and mostly the 90s I wasn't sure how I was going to be able to do this because I didn't have a dark room. I didn't have all this stuff, but this has allowed me to. All right, so we're going to put the fixer in. Um, I didn't have access to dark room and all these trays and dip tanks and things. So this is really, really great. So there's our fix. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this back in. And I'm going to let that cook for five minutes. 
and uh, then it'll be. I'm going to put it back in here when it's done, so we can reuse it, and then we'll wash our film next. So I've got my cup here ready to go. One thing, uh, if you do, well, this is I can show you this. Well, that's kind of doing its thing for a minute. This is a real. This is the wetting agent. So if you get any of these bottles um, and you want to be able to help control the flow of stuff coming out. What I did, I don't know if this will come out in the video or not, but I took a toothpick and put two little holes in there, and one's for vent, one's for pour, and basically it makes it come out a whole lot slower, so you can try to, you know, if you only need this much of something, it's a whole lot easier to have the come out a whole lot slower. Uh, the Pyrocat that I just bought, these big bottles, I was hoping these were foil lined, but they're not. So I just had to be a little extra careful on pouring those into the little beakers. Um, yeah, so we'll see. It's, uh, so let's see, we are um, got about four minutes to fix. So what we'll do is we'll come back and we get ready to do the wash and go to the next step. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our five minutes on the fix. So I've got my container with my funnel. And another thing, the reason why I like these funnels is they fit the base of the Zebra Chrome drum, so they were whopping 88 cents. So I'm just going to take this and I'm putting it back into our container so we can reuse it here for a little bit. Okay, we got most of it out. There you go, the old shaker shaker. I'm just going to set that in the sink for a minute. So now we're going to start our wash. So I'm going to take, again, 150 milliliters of water. I'm just going to pour that in here. And I'm going to turn this on and set the base on there. We're going to hit continue on the app. So we're kind of getting on the home stretch. So now what I'm going to do is every two minutes, it's going to be a total of 10 minutes washing time, but every two minutes I'm going to dump this out and put fresh uh, distilled water in. And that's my answer to a constant wash because again, uh, out where I live, I don't not, not not able to do that with the water. So, all right. So what I'll do is I will see you at the end of the fixing, or I'm sorry, the washing, and then we'll get it ready for the wetting agent. Okay. So our time's up. So what I'm going to do is drain the last of the wash. There we go. So we moved our camera so you guys can, we can get a little bit better angle on this. All right, so after all this, here we go. Um, I have no idea what's on here. I have no idea if it worked out. <laughs> so we will see. So you and I, we're, we're seeing this together. So I've got my little clip ready to go to hang the film. We're gonna, here's our um, wedding agent. So I'm just gonna take this off now. And I'll just set this over here. Okay, here we go. Let's see if there's something on there. I'll be. We got a. We got an old gas station. So I'm just gonna gently put this in here. And I just kind of rock it for 30 seconds. Something I forgot to mention, uh, when you go to take your film out of the film cassette to put it in this, I would highly recommend that you wash your hands and completely dry them. That way you're going to be sure that there's no oil from your fingers or anything like that's going to get on the film. So that seems to have worked well for me. Yeah, I think this is, uh, I think this is going to be good. So we got something on there. Plus we shot a second one, right? So we have a, a backup just in case. This is probably not going to show too well in the video. I'll uh, switch angles here in a minute and we'll show you what we got. All right, so I got a sheet of paper. I'm going to try and make this work for you so we can see. Let's pick the whole thing up.
Let's see if we can get this on camera here a little bit. This is my uh, really crude light table. So if you guys can see that, but that kind of looks like what we shot. Okay, so basically what we're going to do now is I will clean this all up, dry it all out, and then I'm going to take the second sheet and do the exact same thing all over again. And we'll see how that one there turned out. Okay, everybody, so we're done with the second sheet. So I thought you guys would want to see how that came out. So I'm just finishing up the last of the wash. You know, I don't, I don't care how many times I've done this. I'm always so anxious to see what it looks like, <laughs> if it turned out. Um, like a little kid on Christmas morning, I guess. So it's a lot of fun. All right, here we go. Let's uh, see what we got. We'll get rid of our lid for a little bit. All right, the good news is there's film in there. All right, now let's see if there's something on it. Look at that. It's hard to see, but uh, at least there's, we got an image, so that's always nice. Again, I'm just going to put it in the wetting agent for about 30 seconds. So, yeah. So we got two successful sheets. Um, yeah, so that's basically all there is to the development process, at least for black and white. It's pretty simple. And for large formats, so if you're doing 4x5 or 8x10, it's pretty simple. It's simple to do 35 and 122. I've helped people do that. All right, so it was a good day. We uh, got two successful sheets uh, exposed in the last video, and we got them developed in this video. So the next one we'll do will be the scanning part. So you can see how I, how I uh, handle that and how I achieve to my final prints. Uh, there's a couple notes. Paper towels. I usually don't get excited about paper towels, but <laughs> um, I mean, it's paper towels. So this seemed to have less lint. Um, it's more like a cotton almost, so you would think it'd be full of lint, but it was much better than the bulk size of the store bought uh, Sam's brand or whatever it is, Maker's Members Mark, I think is what it's called. So I would definitely try those if you're having those kinds of problems. Uh, the only thing I forgot, I knew I was going to forget some when I piled everything in the car to bring it down, is my print files. And if you've not heard of those, print files are basically their uh, plastic sheets that you can slide your finished film into. And then they usually are three hole punch, so you can put them in a binder. Uh, they make them for 35 all the way up to 8x10. So I, of course, have the 8x10 ones, and I forgot them. So what I will do is I will carefully get these home uh, and get them in the print files. And what's nice about that is there's places to write on the edges of any information like the date and what it is and that kind of thing. So um, during the hurricane, when we had that in September, that was one of the things that actually came with us when we evacuated is I took the binders of negatives and brought them with us. It's because that's my originals, that's my raw files. It's, you know, it'd be kind of hard to replace those without having to go out and reshoot all that all over again. So something to think about. All right, so as always, I appreciate you guys watching this and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the process. If you have any questions, comments, please put it down below. I will answer and read each and every question and comment. If I don't know what the answer is, I'm sure somebody watching this could probably um, give us a better answer. If I don't have one, or the, even if I have one, somebody may have a better answer that works for them. So that's what's nice about this. It's a community. We're all in this together, so we're all trying to help each other out. So again, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully, if you like this, you might consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already, so you know you get notified when all these videos come out. As always, thanks, and we'll catch you next time.